Welcome back, and now let us cross over to our sister station, Spice FM, for a conversation that happened earlier with Professor Romanas Othiambo, who is Vice Chancellor, Mary University of Science and Technology, where they were having a discussion on the future of higher education in Kenya. Let's listen in. Uh, professor, and when you say it is a good model, what do you mean? For the last almost 10, 15 years, mm. the Kenya higher education system universities have mm. been using a model which is called differentiated unit course. Mm -hmm. That means if I'm doing, that is DUC, if I'm doing art and you are doing medicine and she's doing engineering, mm. you know these are different courses in terms of their resource requirement. Sure. And so this costing it's basically based on that difference in terms of the equipment, in terms of the teachers, in terms of the medical, the, the learning experience that me as a teacher would like to have and you as a doctor would like to have and you as an engineer would like to have. That is what is called differentiated unit course. So it takes into consideration the resource requirements, the time also you take in learning and all that. Now, the new funding model has gone a step ahead. It's still differentiated unit course, but then also bringing our socioeconomic status. As a parent or as a child, I may be coming from a family where, which is financially well resourced, or I may be an orphan, for example, or I may be you and me, the way you look at me, my brother, you look like a mid, I, I, I hope that does not offend you, you are oh, a, mid, a, mid, a, mid, a mid income guy, you know, the middle I class. I do not take offense. <laughs> Thank you very <laughs> much. And so him, what yes. happens, the new funding model, <laughs> as, which has been uh, authored by our president, Ruto, yeah. is basically taking into consideration of all this. So they have introduced what we call bands. So there's what we call... Uh, there's part that will be if you come to the university, there's part where you'll get the loan, which all we all know, the so-called Ringera loan, the help. Mm -hmm. Then uh, there is the bursary, which we all call the scholarship. This one you don't pay. And then you come from a parents, the, 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 or somebody sponsoring, there's the household part of it that you have to pay. So again, these are also now divided in several all kind of uh, stages. Uh, so if you are an orphan, for example, you can find that most of the time you, are, you get all the money paid for you with mm. very little one, maybe 5% or 10% that you are, your parents or whoever your sponsor is going to pay for you. But if you are somebody coming from a well-resourced uh, place, then you may end up even paying 40% mm -hmm. uh, as fees from your pocket. And this is what sometimes people have not understood. But I think that is a good thing. It takes into consideration our socioeconomic status. It takes into consideration the different courses we are taking. It takes into consideration the number of students coming to do those kind of programs. Mm -hmm. So are we saying that with this sort of, with, the, with this model, mm -hmm. that people whose backgrounds are definitely well resourced, some can end up actually paying 100% of the fees that is required? No. They will not pay 100%, but they can end up paying almost 40%. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, so that the other side, and that's a lot of money, for example. If you are doing medicine, for example, medicine is around 600,000, 600, for example. Per year. Per year. Yeah. So 40% of that is 240,000. And the public universities and private universities have become very wise in that. That's now where they, we are fighting right, right now, between the public universities and the, the private, private universities. Yeah. So if I know you are a public university, you are going to charge 240000 And I know she's a private university. That is for the household, by the way. Mm -hmm. you, she's also a private university. So I'll basically make mine 230000 <laughs> and you remember, you, you are paying that, but you are also giving you loan that you are still also going to pay. So that's the war right now. Mm. And so <laughs> some murky areas that we are saying that for some time, we need to give it time really to stabilize. Mm. I hope you understand that. Yeah. yeah. Who takes care of the rest? I think it is all taken care of. Mm. I've told you that. If uh, so historically or with now the recommendations from the Presidential Working Party on Education Reforms yes. for higher education, the first part was a bit confusing because we heard, okay, those who are vulnerable, needy, almost needy. We heard all of that. Yes. 
So if you, and then there was a loan, there was a grant, there was a something. Yes. I mean, all quite confusing, to be yes, honest, yes. in terms of who was supposed to do what. Yes. And by their own admission, the, the, the WEP was also wondering, oh, okay, for us, this also might be a bit confusing. Yes. So when we are saying that, for example, medicine, you go to the university with 600,000 shillings and that's what you will pay per year. Yes. But then you end up paying maybe some 240,000 shillings. Who pays 360,000 shillings? And that's what I want. I was trying to explain mm. that in the new funding model for which we are as public university, we are very happy about is that you, the maximum you'll pay as a well-resourced student mm -hmm. is 240,000. For example, if your total fees per year is 600. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you mean the 360 mm -hmm. will now be paid by two people? Mm -hmm. Two people. Yeah. The first person is actually higher education loan board. When and if you get the loan? When, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. of course, the, we always try to, the government has tried to. Mm -hmm. And then the second person you quote is actually the university funding board, okay. where they give the scholarship. Yeah. So the higher you can go for the higher education loan board from Ringera, or you can go, you will also get part of it from the, from the, from the university funding board. Mm -hmm. And uh, how much you get in whichever area is actually used, they will use, they will use a formula which is called the mean testing formula, mm. uh, which says that perhaps you, you are in this level, of course, we can always assess that in terms of the, uh, the, the many things you do, the, 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 the KRA, the tax declaration, the m that you use, and many other things. It will tell us the kind of a place, and with that, we can now say you, it's the, of this 360, perhaps you'll get 60 loan, and then you can go get scholarship 300 and vice versa. No matter your background. Yes. No matter if now all those classifications have been removed. Mm. Needy, extremely needy, vulnerable. All of those classifications have been removed? No. And when you are coming now to do the mean testing, mm. you know there are parameters that will decide now where to place you. Whether you are needy, whether you are vulnerable, whether you are what. Because if you are an orphan, mm. we'll check it will have a point. Mm. If you, we will also check the kind, if you are really needy and you are spending almost a 100,000 every day in mm. Mpesa, mm. we'll get you. <laughs> if you, I mean, if you, you, are, you, you are saying you are needy and we go to check your KRA tax declaration, what you pay, and it is millions, we'll get you. So, so all so this needed. is your own information, and is, we use that information to classify you. And that's what Ringera and his team, my, my friend Munari in University Funding Board, are calling the mean testing instruments. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We saw last year KCSC students, after having sat, rather from four students, after having sat the KCSC. The results of those then were released this year, and uh, there was chatter about how this was the dismal performance and that the number of students then who finished the exam who then would get a place at university was low. That's one side. At the other side, we also hear that, just like you said, in terms of space, in terms of capacity, there really isn't enough to take on the number of students, 800,000 essentially. And if you were to say, let there be complete transition to university, which we can't do, there must be a cutoff, right? It must be a cutoff. There must be a cutoff. Mm. However, we're still saying that this is, are we still in the position whereby spaces at university, whether public or not, are not adequate to take in the number of students that are coming, or is there a balance? Um, I think it's 50-50. Mm. For example, in most of the public universities, what we have heard in the past is that, you know, what there is, is all tied to the funding model. Mm -hmm. And I want to explain this very well to all Kenyans. We have had the DUC, which was saying the government should pay 80 shillings of the 100. Mm -hmm. And then, the, I mean, the, 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 then the, no, the government was to pay 20%. Mm. Uh, the, still, the parents were to pay 20% and the government pay 80. 80. Now, over the last 80, 80, 10 or 15 years, this up to the time we are talking now, instead of the government paying 80, I think because of the socioeconomic problems that we have, the government has been paying around 48 to 50. Mm -hmm. You get this? Mm -hmm. So the question is, where do you get that gap of about 30 shillings? That has been the problem. Mm. And hence the move to the new funding model. And because of that, the resources that are available, 
you are not able to admit all these students who are normally passing. And so, yes, to answer your question, mm. I think we have not had enough resources. But now that the new funding model is coming, maybe the expansion with the spaces and the resources, that will be there. And so in the past, if you remember, I'm not advocating this, but I think it's also a good thing. Mm. Because we are not getting enough money for some time. You remember we used to have self-sponsored programs. This was very good because through that, the, the universities were now able to get some extra money from these people and then close the gap between what the government was supposed to pay and they were not paying. Now with that, you could now hire more lecturers, you could now hire more part-timers, you could now buy, buy more laboratory equipment like my university, which is Science and Technology University. Mm -hmm. You need a lot of things. And for now, it, for that time, it was not possible. Mm. So yes, I think with the new funding model going forward in future, if it continues, I think the space will be there and we may move on. Mm. Yeah. You know, every time one talks about uh, funding models and one looks at what is exactly useful, you're right. If we look at the socioeconomic status and the instability of it right from the time of COVID and the ramifications of it, we haven't stabilized yet because industries are closing, people are losing jobs. So even as we think of applying this particular model, let me just ask a question. As a layman and someone who's completely ignorant of these models, was this the best possible model that we could have adopted? There were Samsons, sir. Mm. The Samsung is that instead of getting, just getting around 58% of the 100 shillings you are to get, the new model, the Samsung is making now, you'll get the whole 100%. Did you get me? That in the former model, mm. you were supposed to get 100 the parents pay 20 percent but the government the government, pay 80. 80. the government pay 80 percent the government was not and able to that pay. yeah and that has been a problem that is a and problem. that's what the root of presidency right now is trying to address that we want a situation where if you are coming to the university and your fees is 100 then you have to pay the whole of 100 mm -hmm. and that's why they are saying now that the parent must pay this amount depending on your level of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And then the others, all of it will have to be paid either in form of loan or in form of what? In form of scholarship. Where you are right, and that's still going to be a challenge, and that's why we have pleaded to the government to give us time to study this. The same same person who is a paid the household is being affected by the global economic trend. By the way, it is not just Kenyans who are having problems. You just say that the, 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 the companies are closing mm. and it's a global problem. And so most people do business, most people are working. And when their company closes, then they will not be able to pay the fees, the high, the, what I was calling the household contribution. Mm -hmm. And that is going to have a serious ramifications. And so you'll find that, yes, the government has given the loan. You'll find that, yes, the government has given the scholarship. But now the money that you are supposed to pay, like what I was talking about, the 240000 whoever is supposed to pay it maybe is, uh, is, has, has lost a job, mm. then that is going to be a serious problem. My goodness. So we're actually looking so at So that is the assumption yeah. that we need to address going forward. Mm. Yeah. You know, I actually think the more... The model makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it's a model, I, 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 I would argue, should have instituted a lot earlier. Mm. Be, because there are people who could actually afford to pay university fees. That's true. All of it. That's true. There are very many who could That's actually true. afford. That's true. I say this because there are parents who pay uh, school fees that are even more than what we pay for students who are in the university. Mm. No, we pay 80,000, 100,000 per, yeah. per term. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Most of them. So, okay. so yeah. what I'm saying is, it is a model that at least seeks to ratify or, or, or make good a situation that had it's, it's proved to be untenable. No, it, it, it worked at a time when there were few students going to university, yeah. the population was small, mm -hmm. but right now, no. Okay, yeah. let's take a break on that point and come back and discuss then how can we guarantee that Form 4 students uh, sit this exam, which in the next 2027, I believe.